Imagine we have a particle moving in uniform circular motion. And maybe it starts here and it ends up here. And as it does that, it traces out an arc and it subtends an angle. We're going to call the angle delta theta. Okay, so we want to define angular velocity. So if I tell you it took um, a time of delta t for this to occur, then I can write down a rate of change in angle like this, delta theta over delta t. And it gets a special name, omega or angular velocity. So let's look at the units of angular velocity. Well, I see radians on the top, and I see seconds on the bottom, so that's radians per second. So for example, 2 pi radians per second is an angular velocity corresponding to an object that makes one full rotation every time a second goes by. I should be clear here that this is really an average angular velocity because I have finite time intervals here. But of course, I can take the small time limit and get the instantaneous angular velocity. And that's a time derivative of the angle. Note that if the angular velocity is a constant, as it is in uniform circular motion, then we can just use the formula for the average angular velocity. The average is equal to the instantaneous. So I can say that omega is delta theta over delta t. And then a useful thing to do with this sometimes is to say, let's let the initial angle be 0. And let the initial time be 0. And there's no loss of generality when you do this, when you're describing things that are spinning. It doesn't matter what you call the starting, the starting angle. So if I solve for delta theta, and then plug in these two assumptions. Our starting point is an angle of zero at t equals zero. Then I end up with this simple expression for the angle as a function of time. And this is really just a, a cousin of distance equals rate times time. It's just angle equals the rate the angle changes multiplied by how much time has go, gone by. And this is going to be really useful for us.